Hello, we're going to talk about a couple of properties of metals in relation to their conduction of electricity, their conduction of thermal energy, and in connection with uh, the softness based on the structure of the particles in the metal. Now, the first thing we're going to look at is this idea of how metals can conduct electricity. So you remember from the previous video, here we have our metal ions, which are in the structure of the metal, and here are our delocalized electrons. These are free to move because they're not in shells. If we were to put a charge across this piece of metal, the electrons, because they're free to move, would move throughout the structure like so. And this is how elect the electrons carry charge and how the metal would conduct electricity because of that reason. So if we were to summarize that in a diagram here, we can look at a piece of metal. In fact, this piece of metal, because of its reddish brown color, is copper, just as an example. But if we zoom in into a particular area, you can see we have our ions here and our delocalized electrons. And we can simply say that metals are good conductors of electricity because the delocalized electrons in the metal can carry electrical charge through the metal. Okay, so that's the key points of how you would describe the reasoning why metals are good conductors of electricity, but they're also good conductors of thermal energy as well. That means heat energy, and that's because energy can be transferred by those delocalized electrons. So in the same way that they can move to carry a charge, they can also move when they're heated or collide into ions and transfer heat along through that method. Okay, so what we're going to look at next is this idea of metals and their hardness or softness based on what they're uh, like. So we have here, pure metals are soft and they can be bent or shaped because the atoms are arranged in neat layers and these layers can slide over each other. So that means that if we were to use a hammer to on a pure metal, we could give it a bang and that would then allow it to change shape, but not just along in that direction there. We can also bang it in a different direction, and in a similar way, this metal could be hammered or bent into shape. That makes pure metals quite soft, but if we have an alloy, which is a mixture of metals and with different sized atoms, that means the layers are no longer in neat rows and columns, and we could say that alloys are harder than pure metals because the layers are distorted. And because the layers are distorted, they cannot slide over each other. So if we were to bang with our hammer an alloy here, give it a hard bang even, that metal is a lot less likely to be able to be bent or hammered into shape because the alloy is much harder. So we can summarize that here. We've got pure metals are soft and they can be bent and shaped because, and those are the reasons which we've just discussed. And that's talking about pure metals. And then we've got our alloys, which is a mixture of metals, or which are mixtures of metals with different size atoms, and they are harder than pure metals because the layers are distorted and they can't slide over each other, as we've just discussed. So often you see things like wheels of cars made of alloys because they are much harder and resistant to being knocked on curbs and things like that. Okay, so that's it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again soon.